I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie. So anyway, before we get started with the no half step in hockey coverage, First, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're getting educated about the show. Well, actually, you can click on that merchandise tab. It's going to take straight to our classic logo t-shirt or pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you come to know and love and expect from the Renegades of Puck are all still available in our online store, whether that's socks, throw pillows, wall arts, bed sets. Makes no difference to us. Something like 88 different items in our online store. The best way to say it is that we've sold out so that you can buy in social media is of critical importance to this independent operation so please jump in the trenches with the renegades of puck you can find us on x and threads you can find us on instagram and facebook you can also still find us on tiktok as long as that still exists so we sure to appreciate you jumping on social media with us it doesn't cost you a thing it doesn't take you but a second but it goes a long way to helping this operation known as the renegades of puck youtube stick taps carlos sure to appreciate you and all of your support on that youtube channel as of late make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel check out all the latest game recaps game previews and of course all of the different latest episodes of renegades of puck tv just search renegades of puck on youtube and subscribe to that channel today and you'll catch up with all the latest video podcast from the renegades of puck the audio podcast can be found on numerous platforms thanks to the full press nhl network and the full press predators podcast you can find us on google stitcher spotify amazon and several other podcast platforms just search Renegades of Puck in your preferred platform today, and you'll be able to find the show. And stick taps love and respect to everybody at Full Press NHL Network. Let us help the show go from local to global in the year 2023 into 2024. And the momentum has continued right along. So again, stick taps love and respect to everybody working behind the scenes. Venmo is how you can support the show. You can scan the QR code that's currently on your screen, or you can go to Venmo and just search Renegades of Puck. Every dollar goes a long way to helping this independent operation. So please, if you can spare a dollar it'll go a long way to helping us right here every single penny of that dollar goes to helping the renegades of puck and our future plans building new equipment building an hvac system out here in the studio and all the other things that we've got to get done here to keep the business up and running after this cycle complete so again venmo scan the qr code that is currently on your screen now listen i know it's time for the no half stuff and hockey cover so let me deliver the goods time for operation number 889 that's right time for show number 889 and at this moment moment in hockey history the Nashville Predators currently find themselves in fourth place in the Central Division after 68 games skated their record of 39 25 and 482 points has the Nashville Predators just seven points shy of an automatic qualifying spot of third place in the Central Division and just nine points shy of first place in the Central Division after 68 games played this season the Predators are single digits in points away from the tops of the Central Division on home ice which is where the Nashville Predators next game will take place and it has been some time because the SEC men's basketball tournament here in town 18 15 and 1 is their record the Predators have now scored 219 goals in the season they've given up 204 that's goal differential of plus 15 Team. Now, before we get into the matchup, the National Purge will be facing next and the next week for the Preds. Let's update you on the standings and where we sit here on an early Sunday. Colorado Avalanche are still in first place in the Central Division. They have 91 points. The Dallas Stars also with 91 points due to games played. Colorado has skated in one fewer games than Dallas. Also has more regulation wins. Colorado Avalanche favorable in some of these tiebreakers right here. The Winnipeg Jets find themselves in third place in the Central Division. They've skated in the least amount of games. Two less than Colorado. Three less than Dallas. But are only two points out of first place at this moment in time. Then you'll find the Nashville Predators leading the wild card pack and also in fourth place in the Central Division with 82 points. Minnesota has fallen eight points behind the Preds at 74 points. The St. Louis Blues in sixth place are nine points behind Nashville with 73. And then Arizona and Chicago just finishing out their seasons. Arizona's in seventh place with 61 points. The Chicago Blackhawks are eliminated in eighth place with 41 points on the season. The National Predators hold wild card number one with 82 points. A substantial lead now. Vegas holds number two. And then you 
you'll find Minnesota and St. Louis, Calgary, Seattle, all trying to make their way into the wild card chase back. But right now, the Nashville Purs are simply denying anybody from even gaining ground on them, much less making up the significant cushion. So the Purs find themselves in a fairly unique situation right now. They are not far in the rearview mirror of an automatic qualifying playoff spot for third, second, or possibly even first. And they're also commanding the wild card right now and keeping the rest of the pack at bay. An example, most recently, a victory over Seattle certainly helped push the Kraken a little further towards the end of their season. That's got you updated on the standings. Now let's talk about the week ahead for the Preds. A little bit more of a traditional week for the Predators back on home ice. This next game is going to be Tuesday night versus the San Jose Sharks. Then the next game, Thursday in Florida. So that's something I want to make note of. Watch out for that one. Florida could be the biggest measuring stick game left on the schedule this season. They're easily the best team in the NHL right now. And the Predators cannot overlook the worst team in the NHL in favor of the matchup they have against the best team. So Sharks on Tuesday. Thursday in Florida to take on the Panthers. Saturday back home to face off against Detroit on the 26th of March. Vegas Golden Knights come to Bridgestone Arena on the 28th of March. And Arizona against the Coyotes on the 30th of March at the Colorado Avalanche. Now for the Preds and the Sharks, they've met two times this season. This is the third of three regular season meetings back on the 21st of October. It was a Predators scoring a 5-1 victory on home. ICC Saros picked up the win. 31 out of 32 were his stats. Tommy Novak, all he does is make plays. He had two goals in that game. Evangelista had And Sherwood also chipped in with goals in that game. Blackwood took the loss for San Jose, 29 out of 34. The two teams would not meet again until February the 24th when the Preds would be in San Jose, but the result will be the same. Predators victory, 4-2 in that game. Soros gets the victory again, 23 out of 25. Sherwood picks up two goals. Forsberg and Nyquist also picks up a goal. Cockadin takes the loss, 31 out of 34. And Granlin and Zadina score for San Jose. So you see Soros 2-0 against the Sharks this season and the National Purs 2-0 against the San Jose Sharks this season, taking all four points so far and outscoring the San Jose Sharks by a total of nine to three. So for the San Jose Sharks, they are currently at 16, 43 and seven on the season. They have 39 points. That is eighth overall in the Pacific Division. And yes, they would be behind even the Chicago Blackhawks in the Central on the road. 6, 24, and 4 is the Sharks record. They've scored 146 goals on the season. They've given up 263 goals against. They have a goal differential of minus 117. Now, let's talk about the most recent stretch of action for this San Jose team. Back on March the 7th, there's a 7-2 loss versus the New York Islanders. On the 9th of March, a 2-1 win versus the Ottawa Senators. Follow that up on the 12th of March with a 3-2 loss to the Philadelphia Flyers. On the 14th, a 6-3 loss at the Pittsburgh Penguins and most recently on the 16th of March a 4-2 loss at the Columbus Blue Jackets. The San Jose Sharks continue their road trip Sunday in Chicago before coming to Nashville on Tuesday night. Take a look inside the matchup and the rankings for these two teams and for the San Jose Sharks almost almost every one of their metrics is in the bottom three of the league. Only their power play is not. So let's get into the matchup in the goals for category the Predators up to 3.19 13th overall in the NHL. I do believe that that goals for number is the highest that the Predators have had all season long goals for San Jose 2.20 is 31st overall one spot from the bottom of the NHL. The goals against category the Preds giving up three per game is 14th overall and the San Jose Sharks giving up 3.91 per game is 32nd and last overall in the NHL. When it comes to the shots on goal category, Predators generating 31.4 on net per game. That's 12th best in the NHL. San Jose generating 25.7. That is 32nd. That is an incredibly low number. In the shots against category, the Preds are giving up 30.3 against. That's 18th in the league. The San Jose Sharks are giving up 35.2. So 10 shots on goal differential between the shots for and the shots against for San Jose. Both of the ratings are 32nd last in the league. Now the power play. This was the one that surprised me. The San Jose Sharks are converting a 20. 20.6% of the season. That's 18th best in the NHL. 34 conversions on 165 opportunities. Not many conversions, not many opportunities for that San Jose team. Just check out the Preds numbers. Preds power plays converting a 20.1%. One spot behind San Jose, 19th in the NHL. But the Preds have converted 12 more times on the power play, 46 times, and have 
uh, about 70 more opportunities, 229 opportunities on the season. So on the penalty kill, the Preds killing off 76.3% of the season, 25th, 49 power play goals against. That's a high number, but not really as high as San Jose. 73.9% is their kill rate. 29th is their ranking, 55 power play goals against on the season. So for the San Jose Sharks, they have three rankings. Goals against shots, four shots against their last in the league. Goals four is one spot from last in the league. Penalty kill, two spots from last in the league. So the San Jose Sharks team is not very good, and the Nashville Predators cannot take them lightly. They must secure these points. When it comes to each and every individual team in the NHL, plenty of high-scoring, high-skilled individuals on those teams. Let's start with the home team, Nashville Predators, and their updated statistics. Philip Forsberg's got 35 goals and 36 assists for 71 points on the season. The captain, Roman Yossi, is at 17 goals and 50 assists for 67 points. Nyquist is 18 and 41 for 59. O'Reilly's got 24 goals and 32 assists for 56 points. And Tommy Novak. All he does is make plays for 14 goals and 24 assists, now 38 points on the season. Mikhail Granlin, former Nashville Predator, over on the other side of the ledger, 9 goals, 34 assists for 43 points. Hurdle's got 34 points on the season. Zetterland, 18 goals and 14 assists for 32 points. Eklund, 10 goals and 20 assists for 30 points. And Zadina, 12 plus 10 for 22. Anticipated goaltending matchup for the Nashville Persons and Jose Sharks sees UC Soros in net with a record of 29, 21, and 4, a 908 save percentage, 2.80 goals against average. Wow, those numbers look so much better now than they did a month ago. Two shutouts on the season. Blackwood, 918 and 3 is his record, 899 is his save percentage, 3.48 goals against average. That's got you all set up for the Nashville Predators and the San Jose Sharks. The Preds finishing off a successful road trip. They continue on with their point scoring streak on their way back to Bridgestone Arena. Just don't get caught in a trap with the worst team in the NHL before you play the best team in the NHL on the road two nights later. We'll be back with the Rebirth Sports full game recap after this. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to March 16th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were in, were in Seattle to take on the Kraken for the third and final time in this regular season series. Head coach Andrew Burnett deploys his lines and defensive combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist are your first line. Mobili, Susan, and Zucker. Jankowski, Novak, Evangelista, Smith, McCarron, and Sherwood make up your fourth line. Your defensive pairings are McDonough, Yossi, Luzon, and Carrier, Barry, and Shen. UC Soros gets the start in next. We are at 133 into the first period. And Susie Soros coming with the first save of the game. And San Yamamoto at 452 of the first period. That's right. Low event first five minutes. It's Alexiak hitting the post. That certainly woke things up for a moment there. At 459 of the first period is Grubauer coming with a save on Beauvillier. At 551 of the first period, it's Grubauer coming with a save on Luke Evangelista. We're at the 725 mark now of the first period. It's Grubauer now coming with another save on Cole Smith. So the natural prayer is getting the Better of the opportunities here in the early part of the first period in Seattle. At the 8.34 mark, Tatar's off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. We see our first special team scenario of the game, and it's in favor of the Nashville Predators. Grubauer would only have to come up with the save on McCarron. The Nashville Predators would be unable to generate any sustained offensive zone time on this particular power play. Good job by the Seattle Kraken penalty kill. 10.49 now at the first period. Susie Sars coming up with the save on Beneers at E11. 20 mark just past the halfway point of the first period. It's Grubauer coming up with safe on carry a strong drive to the net with big power right there and speed. Grubauer turns that aside. 13 18 now into the game and it's Soros coming with save on Bjorg Strand at the 14 37 mark. It's Grubauer coming with the save on Zucker at the 15 38 mark of the first period. We find our scoring breakthrough and it's the Nashville Predators getting on the board first. Tommy Novak, all he does is make plays. His 14th goal of the season gives the Nashville person one nothing lead and this was a weird one right here it was a pass attempt he was attempting to make a play and the puck goes off the defenseman skate and directly into the net so Tommy Novak attempts to make the pass across the slot across the top of the crease and it goes off the defenseman in the net the national players have a 1-0 lead here in the first period 1701 mark of the first it's Grubauer coming with the save on Beauvillier at the 1714 mark Saros comes up with the save on McCann and that would do it back in 
forth until the end of the first period. The Nashville Predators get out of the first period with a 1-0 lead and also double up the Seattle Kraken in shots on goal. Nashville has a total of 10. Seattle has a total of 5. We move into the second period of action and again kind of a slow start to the second period. Teams feeling out low event. 209 into the periods where we find our first shot on goal and it's Grubauer coming with a save on Zucker at the 244 mark of the second period. It's Evans off the box. Two minutes for tripping, putting the Nashville Predators back on the power play. Grubauer comes up with a save on Luke Evangelista and just like the Nashville Predators previous power play, only able to generate one shot on goal. Only one scoring chance for the Preds with the extra attacker on the ice. We hit the 521 mark of the second period and it's Grubauer coming with a save on Alex Carrier at 5 523 of the second period with the Nashville Purse seemingly quite in control of this game. McCarron is off to the box. Two minutes for interference, giving the Seattle Kraken their first opportunity on the power play. Soros can save huge save on Bjorkstrand, moving across to the weak side to close it down. Good anticipation and tracking right here, as well as add some edge work and athletic ability to it as well. You see Soros with one huge save on the power play. That would be it for the Seattle Kraken on their power play. We go to the 836 mark back to even strength here in the second period. You see Saros come with save on Veneers the 918 mark. Saros is coming with save on Jordan Everly. We cross over the middle point of this game and we find ourselves at 1016 of the second period. And it's Grubauer coming with save on Tommy Novak. Roman Yossi finds the long rebound, fires the shot in. Grubauer also turns that one aside. This is a really good scoring opportunity for the Nashville Predators. We go to the 1244 mark now of the second period. And Grubauer comes with save on Alex carry it 1332 of the second period it's UC Saros coming with save on Tanev at the 1510 mark of the second period it is UC Saros coming up with a glove save on Schultz 1724 now of the period it is going to be Grubauer a save on Jeremy Lausanne now we're all the way to the 1845 mark of the second period when UC Saros is coming up with a save on McCann 1928 before we can get to the end of the period it is Lausanne picking up a penalty Two minutes for holding on Tanev. This play was a little bit controversial on the broadcast. Luzon definitely had the player pinned just a little bit. It was, I think I agree with the call. It was on the ice. I think it was a holding call. Luzon did finish off the big hit on Tanev right here, but 19:28 of the second period, he is going to be heading off to the box, putting the Nashville Predators shorthanded over the final 32 seconds of the second period. Seattle would be unable to generate a shot on goal. We hit the end of the second period. The Nashville Predators holding a 1-0 lead, and the Nashville Predators also out shooting Seattle 18 to 12 overall in this game. We go over the clean sheet of the third period and we find the carryover of the power play for the Seattle crack in one minute and 28 seconds worth. Saros comes up with a huge save on McCann with the blocker but then Burakovsky scores his fourth goal of the season. A wrist shot from the right circle beating UC Saros. A lot of commotion a lot of traffic there towards the end of the power play and the Seattle Kraken are able to capitalize on all of it getting the wrist shot there from the right circle. Shen over there on defense unable to come away with a shot block or be very effective on on the play, Burakovsky again ties this game up at one apiece, getting Seattle on the board. Now we are at the 142 mark of the third period. Susie Saros come with save on Karche. We go to the back side of the sheet and we continue on with the third period. It is the 213 mark now of the third period in this brand new game. All tied up. Grubauer comes with save on Philip Forsberg at the 238 mark of the third period. Susie Saros come with save on Jordan Everlay at the 350 mark of the third period. It is Gord off to the box. Two minutes for tripping on Smith. Smith did a good job following the McCarran shot to the net, looking for a rebound opportunity. Gets himself all twisted up, bringing the no half step and jam to the hard areas and earns his Nashville Predators team a power play. The captain, Roman Yossi, is going back to work on this power play. His 16th goal of the season is a rebound put back. The defense was setting some screens, so Yossi gets the puck towards the high slot area, spin 
runs and just fires it. Top corner, Yossi beats Grubauer. The defense and all the traffic in front definitely helping the captain of the Nashville Predators. The Predators regain their one goal lead, now lead 2-1 to one here in the third period. We go to the 443 mark of the third period. Susie Sars coming with a save on Larson. We go all the way to the 758 mark where we find Susie Sars coming with a save on Yamamoto's wraparound attempt. He had speed into the zone. Took it all the way down below the goal line and tried to tuck it in the post. Could not get it to go. Burkowski following up almost gets the tying goal again. 8.58 of the third period. It is Grubauer coming with a save on Luchen. And then at the 9.01 mark of the third period, it is the captain, Roman Yossi. With his second goal of the third period, his 17th goal of the season, it was a heavy shot from straight on. Jankowski won the faceoff straight back to McDonough. McDonough trades it over to his partner right in the middle of the ice. And the captain, Roman Yossi, unloads with that heavy shot as we've seen him do so many times over his career. But it seems like this year, especially, he's been utilizing that particular part of the ice to take the shot. Roman Yossi's second goal of the game is his 17th of the season. The Predators have a 3-1 to one lead here in Seattle. We're at the 1124 mark of the third period. Now we find Grubauer coming up with a save on Luke Chen at the 1148 mark. You see Saros comes up with a save on Dumoulin. National Predators do a good job closing things down. Just go all the way to the 15 night. 19 mark of the third period. Now when we find UC Saros coming with another save on Dumoulin, then all the way to 1745 before Saros has to come up with a save on Berkowski. Uh yet one more time in this game. At the 1840 mark of the third period, we find Philip Forsberg skating into a puck and pushing it into the net for an empty net goal. His 35th of the season team leading now third all-time in franchise history with that 35 goal. Mark the Nashville Predators not only lead 4-1, but they close this game out with a final score of 4 to one they out shoot the Seattle Kraken 32 23 in this game the captain Roman Yossi takes over a tied game in the third period and gets not only the game winning goal but the insurance goal and then Philip Forsberg gets the empty net goal at the end of this one the Nashville Purs close out a road trip what easily could have been a trap game after an emotional victory not only a measuring stick game but a statement victory against the Winnipeg Jets going into the Seattle Kraken arena they have handled themselves quite professionally, found themselves tied in the third period. Roman Yossi helps them pull away, and the Preds close out this road trip, taking seven out of eight points, and their overall point streak continues. What this team is continuing to do is honestly quite remarkable. The Preds with a good, solid, professional road victory to close out a road trip. Now they get on a plane, they finally get an opportunity to come back home. It's been a while. It's time to get to the next segment. That's it for the Reverse Sports Full Game Recap. It's time for analysis. So much more right here on the Renegades of Fuck podcast. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner-operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant, Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar-inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been, what you were going through, and where you were going, and I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. That was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. National Purs closing out a successful road trip in Seattle, picking up the 4-1 to victory. UC Soros got the start, picks up the victory. His 29th of the season, 23 out of 24. Strong professional game in net on the road. He had to make some big-time saves in this game, and I thought that he was dialed in and ready to finish off this road trip in a strong way. So, for again, for UC Soros, now at 29 wins on the season, a 9.08 save percentage, a 2.80 goals against average those numbers are looking really really respectable and reasonable now that we are at this point in the season and believe me we talked about UC Saros's numbers a lot this season and they were certainly not that an in-game save percentage 958 20 even strength saves two power play saves one shorthanded save for the goaltender UC Saros the captain Roman Yossi dominant in leadership skill set and on the ice all the way around two goals in this game including the game winning goal both coming in the third period 
and Roman Yossi took over this game. Last game, a couple of assists and beating the Winnipeg Jets absolutely controlled that game. This game picks up the two goals, giving his team the victory. 67 points on the season. Now, I believe that Roman Yossi has played his way into the Norris conversation. If you go back and look at October, you look at the beginning of November, absolutely not. But if you look at the way he's finishing down the stretch, and that's what the awards people always look at, is how are you finishing down the stretch? Not did you pile up 30 points in October and then coast to 60 for the rest of the season. But you were at Captain Roman Yossi at 67 points it has been the top scoring defenseman in the NHL. Uh, I don't remember the exact starting point, but the second half of the season has just been exceptional. And Roman Yossi, I think, has played himself into Norris consideration again. That heavy shot from out high. Love seeing that every single time. And a rebound put back in this one, crashing the net. Again, the captain, Roman Yossi, took a little while to adjust under Andrew Burnett with the new system. And now he is feasting out there on the rink, night in and night out. And I anticipate him doing that against the San Jose Sharks, just like I anticipate the next player I'm going to talk about, Philip Forsberg. I think that he's also going to feast against the San Jose Sharks. Picks up a goal. It's an empty netter, but I'm going to write it down because he's the goal-scoring leader on the team. Also picked up an assist, and that goal was his 35th of the season. And that moves Philip Forsberg into third all-time in franchise history. Now, 40 goals. I believe that that's going to happen without a doubt. Five more goals. There are opponents like San Jose, Columbus, Arizona. There are teams below the Predators in the standings that Philip Forsberg has feasted on in the past. And I anticipate he's going to do so, probably looking to do so against the San Jose Sharks team. 40 goals. I think it's within reach. The franchise record might be a little bit more difficult, but the way Philip Forsberg can pile up goals in short stretches, he has one more big game, three goals in a game, and I think he's going to get to the franchise record this season. So Philip Forsberg with the empty netter plus the assist. That's his 35th of the season to lead the team and put him in third place all-time franchise history. Tommy Novak, all he does is make plays. Look, he was trying to make a play right here, and he puts the puck in the net. What do you want a guy to do who's that talented that when he's just trying to make a pass, he ends up putting the puck in the net? He was trying to feed the puck across the top of the goal mouth, across to the weak side for a, another one of his teammates when it goes off the defenseman's gate and into the net. Tommy Novak picks up a goal in this game. Also had three block shots in his 14-51 in total time on ice. Novak fifth on the team in scoring. He's got 38 points on the season, and I believe he is continuing to develop and continuing to grow into a really good and important player. And I hope that continues because the Predators have made a commitment to him financially for the next couple of years. Mark Jankowski, quietly, two assists in this one. He wins face-offs. That sets up goals. That's incredibly important fact about the sport of hockey. If you win face-offs, that means you start with puck possession. If you start with puck possession, that means you don't have to expend a bunch of energy trying to regain puck possession. And when you start with puck possession, that means you can set the tone, the pace, and the offense. So that's exactly what Mark Jankowski has allowed the National Predators to do, picking up these helpers. Great to see Jankowski. Jankowski is a veteran player in this league, another type of guy that Andrew Burnett and Barry Trotz just absolutely love. Love. Jankowski's been around. He's got experience, and it's paying off for this Nashville Predators team. He also had a shot on goal. He also had a block shot. and only skated 12-15 in total time on ice. Two points in this game. Important, important stuff right there by Jankowski. McDonough also picks up two assists in this game. And Ryan McDonough is just the most solid, the most professional. Two defensemen now out injury. McDonough just steps up and continues doing the work. Now he's on the top pair with Roman Yossi. He's picking up two assists in this game. Really impressive stuff for McDonough. 23-19 in total time on ice. He led the team in total time on ice. He led the team in shorthanded time on ice at 3.04. You've got to give stick taps to an old, grizzled veteran like Ryan McDonough out there leading his squad on the last night of a road trip in total time on ice. That's going to do it for the analysis portion of things. We've got to get to the box score, so let's go ahead and hear from our good friends at Stripe Digital Solutions. Then we'll come back. We'll get the good, cold, hard numbers known as the box score. We'll wrap this thing up. Operation 889. Cruising right along right here on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way, from startup to full-time operation, 
Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck podcast. Let's talk about what's going on in this box score. Let's talk about these numbers. Roman Yossi, two goals, paces the Nashville Predators. Also, Philip Forsberg and Tommy Novak with goals in this game. So, two goals from the defense, two goals from the forwards on the assist side of things. Jankowski with two assists. Ryan McDonough also with two assists. Forsberg and Nyquist chip in with the other assists in this game. So, four assists on the top side for the forwards, two at the bottom for the defense. And when it comes to Shots on goal. Four was the leading numbers. Captain Roman Yossi and then a couple of players with three. Zucker and also Forsberg with three shots on goal. When it comes to block shots, Tommy Novak had three block shots in this game to pace the Nashville Predators. Alex Carey had two. Roman Yossi had two. Philip Forsberg also chipped in with two. When it comes to the physical component of things, Luzon stays above his game pace, heading towards that NHL record already now setting the Nashville Predators franchise record for hits. He adds five more in this game. He is, again, well on his way. If he maintains, I believe it's four hits per game average the rest of the way, he will break the NHL record all time. Uh, typically, he's above five per game. So I don't see any reason why Luzon isn't going to make it to the NHL record for hits in the season. Three was the magic number the rest of the way across the board. Shen had three hits. Zucker had three hits. Cole Smith had three hits. Sherwood had three hits. And Michael McCarron also had three hits. All the familiar names you expect in the physical category. McCarron was mixing it up all night long, like the snarl in his game in this one. Time on ice, leaders, and comes to the forwards, 1833 for Ryan O'Reilly, 1806 for Philip Forsberg, 1657 for Gus Nyquist. Thought the team did a good job overall of rolling four lines in this. The least amount of time on ice was 1215. The most amount was 1833. So that's a good job by Andrew Burnett yet again of rolling all four lines. If this team can continue rolling all four lines the rest of the remaining schedule, they will have their players rested and ready to go, and they will also have everyone dialed in and ready for a first-round series, no matter who it is against. If you can roll four lines, you are going to be in a good position. When it comes to the defense, I mentioned Ryan McDonough led the defense in total time on ice, 23-19, but we also had Yossi at 21-46 and Carrier at 21-12 and Luzon at 20 14 in this game when it comes to the special teams power plays it was time on ice leaders 222 for nyquist 218 for forsberg 218 for ryan o'reilly 220 for the captain roman yossi when it comes to the power play time on ice 304 for Ryan McDonough led the Nashville Persian shorthanded time on ice. Cole Smith at 221 and Colton Sissons at 219. That's going to, oh no, UC Saros. I almost forgot the goaltender again. UC Saros was 23 out of 24, gave up one goal against an in game save percentage of 958, 20 even strength saves. Not the most workload ever. Two power play saves, one shorthanded save in this game. That's going to do it for the box score. As a matter of fact, that's going to do it for this entire show. Operation number 889 just cruising by already in the book. We're going to close this thing out by saying that National Prayers road trip, incredibly successful. It started out with a back-to-back against bad teams, the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Minnesota Wild, but still a back-to-back matinee games on a weekend. Tough circumstance, got to travel. Predators managed to pick up three of those four points when not playing uh, their best hockey, and they ended the road trip in Winnipeg and then Seattle, and they were playing some of their best hockey in those games. The game against Winnipeg will go down as one of the games of the year, and the game in Seattle is a hell of a professional way to end a road trip and pick up seven out of eight possible points on this four game road trip remember the nashville predators previous five game road trip they swept that one and now this one they pick up seven out of eight points the predators have picked up 17 out of 18 road points in recent stretch of hockey and oh yeah that streak continues the nashville predators climbing the charts of the all-time points streak by this franchise so for the nashville printers it is definitely a trap game coming up they've been on the road for a while they're coming back home they've got the worst team in the nhl in the san jose sharks before they head on to miami to take on the best team in the nhl the florida panthers just looking ahead and being a realist about this one the nashville Predators point streak could be in jeopardy against one of the worst teams in the nhl and it could be one of those games that makes a lot of people throw their hands up but i'm hoping not i'm hoping that andrew brunette has his team rolling in the right 
away and with rolling all four lines and keeping the confidence going. I'm hoping that the Predators can overcome uh, typical cliche hockey moments like a late season complete falter to a bad hockey team like the San Jose Sharks. I'm hoping the Preds can prove me wrong on that one. Last time when Montreal was here in town, I thought that was a trap game too, and the Preds were able to prove everybody wrong on that one and move ahead. But that's the kind of attitude they need to have. They need to maintain that road mentality coming home. The word has been relentless, and they need to carry that relentless attitude, that relentless enthusiasm, and that relentless no half step and jam. It needs to come back to Bridgestone Arena against the San Jose Sharks before the National Bears head on off to Miami. The Preds just pretend this is another road game when they come back home to face off against San Jose. I mean, they haven't seen Bridgestone Arena in so long, and they're only staying for one night. It's practically set up to be like a road game. All right, that's going to do it for Operation Number 89. The Preds rolling on. It's making the season a hell of a lot of fun to cover, and we uh, knew it was going to be a more interesting and a more unique season with the rebuild, with the new head coach, with the new GM, uh, but it has been fascinating, fascinating to watch what's happening. We've got Philip Forsberg making a run at 40, maybe a franchise record. You've got the captain, Roman Yossi, now back in the Norris picture got Nyquist and O'Reilly coming in here as free agents and just being incredible. Both of them are going to end up with over 60 points. Tommy Novak's making plays all over the place and getting the contract and UC Saros this season has rebounded. 68 games in the books. Cannot believe how fast it's gone by. We're already approaching the end of March. So everybody be careful out there. Have a great rest of the weekend. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. We'll be back with another episode on Monday of the Renegades Puck Podcast, Operation 889 in the books. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. Stick taps, love and respect.